Last month, you guys saw me take a look at all of the shotguns in the Resident Evil series. From there, I gave you guys my rankings on both the best and the worst shotguns in Resident Evil. And sure, some of them you agreed with me on, while others not so much. Still, it's a lot of fun to get to see what other people think about the weapons in Resident Evil compared to my own opinions. And between getting a lot of requests on more weapons in the series and fellow Patreon member King of Horror requesting this topic, I figure now is the perfect time to revisit the guns in the series. This time we take a look at the best and the worst machine guns in the Resident Evil series. As for the rules for this video, there's really only one rule. No bonus weapons or bonus upgrades. I guess that's technically two rules. But this means that every machine gun on this list can be obtained on the first playthrough. So unfortunately, no Chicago typewriter and no unlimited bonuses for weapons. And before we get started with today's video, don't forget to hit that like button, my fellow nerds. Help me get this video out there to as many people as possible. Let's beat that YouTube algorithm. Also, if you want to pick a ranking video that I do once per month, similar to this video, then become an Alpha Stars Patreon member. You can do so by clicking the join button down below or heading over to patreon.com slash nerdspacegames. Anyway, my name is Ruben with Nerdspace Games, and this is my top five best and my top five worst machine guns in the Resident Evil series. Let's get it. Just like last time, we are going to start with the best and then go back and forth between each list until we reach number one machine gun in each category. The first weapon to crack on this list for the best machine guns in the series is the CQBR Assault Rifle. While this gun has made an appearance in Resident Evil 4 Remake as well, it's the Resident Evil 3 Remake's version of this excellent weapon that is better in just about every single way. In Resident Evil 3 Remake, on the first playthrough, the CQBR can only be obtained by Jill if the player is playing on the easiest difficulty mode. But the player does get the opportunity to use this massively overpowered weapon during the Carlos segments of the game regardless of the difficulty. I will admit that the weapon feels more powerful than it might actually be because of the game it appears in. While not to the rate of Resident Evil 4 Remake, 3 Remake is a game that focuses more on being overwhelmed a lot with zombies and taking on enemies that are pretty much bullet sponges, including Nemesis himself. So in a game that essentially focuses on those elements, having a rapid fire weapon like the CQBR Assault Rifle is extremely useful. Actually, it makes the hospital lobby battle much easier thanks to the fire rate and the damage it deals to the horde of zombies coming your way. Now, if we are talking about the unlimited, unlockable CQBR assault rifle, then I might have bumped this weapon even higher on this list. However, as with the issue with most machine guns, the downside of this weapon is that it drains ammo quickly and unless you have the unlimited version, you'll find yourself running out of resources pretty fast. So let's start off the worst machine guns by first taking a look at one of the classic Resident Evil weapons, the submachine gun from the original Resident Evil 2. Granted, I feel like if you really wanted to, you could include other weapons similar to this one for this spot such as the Ingrams from Resident Evil Code Veronica. But I do think there is one slight difference that might make Resident Evil 2's machine gun less useful, and that's the potential for less inventory space compared to those games. See, one of the biggest issues with machine guns in the classic Resident Evil games is due to the fact that they seem to always take up two inventory spots. While this might not seem like that big of a deal, in a game that requires a lot of inventory management and backpacking, you'll find that the extra slot it takes up almost counters the usefulness of the weapon itself. Yet, with Resident Evil 2, it becomes even more stressful. To retrieve this weapon on your first playthrough, you as the player must make a choice out of three options in Scenario A of the game. You take the machine gun and leave the side pack that grants two additional inventory slots behind. You can pick up the side pack and leave the weapon behind. Or lastly, you could pick up both items at the same time, but in doing so, you leave nothing behind for scenario B. Now, most people would leave one behind. However, if you were to do this, then you make the machine gun even less valuable. Because now, not only are you picking up a weapon that takes up two valuable inventory slots, but you are also doing so with only eight inventory slots instead of 10. And carrying a weapon that runs out of ammo pretty quick but also takes up two inventory slots, leaves less room for healing items, other weapons, and key items even. So if you're like me, you either use the machine gun as soon as possible and be done with it, or leave it in your inventory box for all eternity. Now, if the weapon only took up one slot of your inventory space, then the argument could be made that it's worth something given that it deals damage at a faster pace than your average handgun. But when you combine the lack of ammo for this weapon in the game, 
the speed of how fast you drain through your resources for this gun, and the extra slot it takes away from you, then it's no wonder that this gun cracks the list for one of the worst machine guns in the series. Number 4 best machine gun in Resident Evil is the Lee 5 from Resident Evil 4 Remake. The Lee 5 is probably one of the more flexible weapons on this list. To be completely honest though, this gun isn't able to reach its full potential until fully upgraded. But once this weapon has the right amount of upgrades, it is a solid gun that can be used in just about any situation that Leon comes across in Resident Evil 4 Remake. The Lee 5 has the penetration ability, similar to the Blacktail. Only with a machine gun versus a handgun, you'll find that it is far more useful for crowd control compared to the Blacktail. With this ability maxed out, you can find the Lee 5 piercing through not only enemies to hit other enemies, but even shields, making those shield enemies far less annoying to deal with. Yet the Lee 5 finds itself dealing more damage than even the TMP. Something else that makes the Lee 5 really stand out compared to most machine guns is that if you wanted to, you could attach a scope to the weapon. That includes the biosensor scope used for dealing with regenerators. And while the CQBR allows you to do the same thing in this game, the fact is that the Lee 5 still uses machine gun ammunition unlike the CQBR. As I've already stated, the key trait here that gives the Lee 5 the edge over all other machine guns in this game comes down to the flexibility of the weapon. Rather you choose to use it for crowd control thanks to the penetration ability, or mid to long range attacks thanks to the fact that you can attach a scope to it, this weapon seriously does it all. Number 4 Worst Gun in Resident Evil, the MQ-11 Resident Evil 2 Remake. So the issue with most machine guns in Resident Evil except for the classic games, is the fact that machine guns don't really stagger enemies as much as just about any other weapon in the game. And to be fair, the developers did this on purpose to make the rapid fire from using machine guns not too overpowered. I mean, they already deal damage at a much faster rate, so a game like Resident Evil 2 Remake went the direction of giving less of a stagger effect on the enemies of the game. Now, I'm not saying that the MQ-11 is a completely useless weapon. Actually, I would argue that some situations prove to benefit this weapon more, hence why it doesn't move up farther on this list. An example of this machine gun being extremely useful is when dealing with G3 or G4 Birkin during Cleric's playthrough. Sure, you have the minigun for G4, but chances are that you'll run out of resources for that minigun before you finish Birkin off. The MQ gives Claire the ability to put in more rapid fire into Birkin's weak spot and finish him off much faster. Overall though, the uses for this weapon specifically, compared to other machine guns in other Resident Evil games, are limited. You don't have an upgrade system like you do in Resident Evil 4 Remake, so you're pretty much left with attachments to help improve this weapon, and while they do tremendously help out the weapon, when all is said and done, the weapon is still fairly useless against regular zombies or any other enemy types except for a few boss encounters in my opinion. Now I know there are a few people out there that feel like this weapon is decent enough, but the fact is to me this weapon lacks in pretty much every single department that you're looking for when you're trying to pick out a machine gun. The aiming sucks, the recoil is awful, there is almost little to no stagger effect, so really what other benefits are there to using this weapon except for the automatic rapid fire effect, which in my mind is really only useful for stage 4 Birkin or even final stage Birkin. Number 3 best machine guns in Resident Evil comes down to the AK-74 Resident Evil 5. Hands down Resident Evil 5's AK-74 is easily the most powerful machine gun in the game. This sledgehammer of machine guns has the ability to be upgraded to 250 firepower, meaning that even for a machine gun it packs one hell of a punch. So if we were just doing the strongest or most powerful machine guns in the series, then this one could be a true contender for the number one spot, assuming we don't count bonus weapons still like the Gatlin gun. With that being said, other than how powerful this gun is, it's hard to find other things that stand out with this weapon, hence why it doesn't make it up to number two or even number one on this list. Don't get me wrong, I know for a lot of us out there, firepower is the most important aspect to any weapon. But for me personally, I look for a few other things, especially when machine guns are concerned. Mainly because machine guns, along with shotguns to an extent, are supposed to be my go-to crowd control weapons. Now, I'm not saying that this weapon isn't good for crowd control. As a matter of fact, I would argue the opposite, that this weapon is decent at crowd control. I just feel like the other two weapons that I'm going to talk about in just a moment are a little bit more useful for that factor. 
Something else going for this weapon specifically, and a big reason why it makes this list for best machine guns in the series, comes down to the firepower, but mainly the damage output against the boss enemies. I like to call this machine gun the boss killer, because this gun actually drains the health of boss enemies really quick. So if you're looking for the most powerful machine gun that isn't a bonus weapon, then this is probably your guy. Number three, worst machine guns. How about we stick with Resident Evil 5 and go to the VZ-61. Also known as the Scorpion, the VZ-61 is a weapon that is great in the right hands and god awful in the wrong hands. And based on this ranking, you can probably tell that the VZ-61 in my hands is a bad thing. Before I start talking about the things I don't like about the VZ-61, I do want to give it some props. The benefits to using this weapon over other machine guns in Resident Evil 5 include a high rate of fire, the capacity for 300 fucking bullets, and the fact that it has a perk that gives it a better critical rate than other machine guns. Outside of that, the VZ-61 finds itself weaker than any other machine gun in this game. For example, it deals the least amount of damage, even less than the MP5. And while the rate of fire makes for great crowd control, the MP5's ability to pierce through enemies and the AK-74's firepower make both machine guns even more useful for crowd control. Since the weapon deals less damage than any other machine gun in the game, the VZ-61 tends to burn through ammo at a much faster rate unless you can manage to get multiple critical hits. And this is where the VZ-61 could be extremely useful in the right hands. Its signature perk increases the chances of critical hits, with that being said, that means you need to hit the weak spots with this weapon as much as possible. Doing so gives you a 1 out of 3 chance at getting a critical hit, which means this weapon could be more powerful than the other machine guns. But that's just it. You need to aim high for the heads to get those critical hits. And with moving targets like the enemies that you'll come across in Resident Evil 5, this is easier said than done. Not to mention the recoil and the accuracy on this gun makes it even harder to get those vital headshots. And with the risk versus reward scenario, it seems more productive to use valuable resources on better odds such as the MP5, the SIG, the AK-74. The only reason I don't move it higher up on this list is because I know that there are people out there that can easily make good use of the risk versus reward benefits that the VZ-61 offers. I'm not one of them and I feel like a majority of the people out there are not one of them either, hence why it takes up one of the spots in the worst machine guns in Resident Evil. The second best machine gun in Resident Evil goes to the TMP with the stock in Resident Evil 4 the original game. I can't think of a more overpowered non-bonus weapon in the original Resident Evil 4 game than the fully upgraded TMP with a stock attachment. This is the perfect example of the fact that size does not matter. While it's a tiny little thing that barely takes up inventory space, the TMP once fully upgraded can deal a massive amount of damage in a short amount of time. Increasing its firepower and capacity as soon as possible is a must because just with these two categories fully upgraded, even the bosses of the game will go down fairly quickly. It even competes with the Chicago typewriter to an extent, although you can't really compare unlimited OP bonus weapons with a gun found in the early game of Resident Evil 4. Still, some people might argue that this weapon is even better than the Chicago Typewriter. FYI, I am not one of those people though. Something else that the TMP has on other machine guns is the fact that it does a great job at staggering enemies, making it much easier to perform game-breaking combos. Oh, and the TMP is actually the only fully automatic gun in the game outside of the bonus weapons like the Chicago Typewriter. For that reason, you can easily feel how broken it was to introduce an automatic weapon that had the ability to stagger enemies quickly with its rapid fire and potentially clear out a horde of enemies within seconds. The remake for Resident Evil 4 even confirmed how overpowered this weapon was, as it alongside the knife got nerfed hard. So while the remake's version of this weapon doesn't break the top 5 best machine guns in the series, the original definitely makes a case for the top spot and ultimately lands at number 2 for me. Number 2 worst machine guns in the Resident Evil series goes to the Bear Commander in Resident Evil 6. Okay, so this one is somewhat complicated. And depending on how you rank it, you could make an argument for it being on the best list versus the worst. Let's first start with why it makes the worst list for me personally, and then I'll go over one aspect of this weapon that some of you might argue that I should have taken into consideration. Every single machine gun is rough in Resident Evil 6. Yet three characters specifically are extremely unlucky and lucky at the same time when it comes to the machine guns. 
That's because Ada, Jake, and Sherry all get their hands on the bear commander. If we're just focusing on machine guns, then this weapon sucks ass. Firstly, this machine gun is the weakest machine gun in the entire game. Compared to any other rifle in this game, and it is just god awful bad. But it doesn't stop there. Not only does this machine gun lack in firepower, but it also has the lowest chance at a critical attack compared to any other machine gun in the game. So what's the score so far? Worse at dealing damage to enemies, worse at critical hits on enemies. So does it really have anything going for it? Well, it shoots faster than any other machine guns, but not enough to make up for all the downsides it has. Some of you might argue that there's one aspect of this gun that makes it a little bit more valuable as a machine gun, and that is the grenade launcher attachment. Since I'm bringing machine guns, is it really fair to include the grenade launcher when making my list? I honestly don't know. It's a tough one. Considering that it uses different ammunition though, I feel like it's only fair to treat them as separate weapons. Therefore, I'm not including the grenade launcher attachment for this ranking and that's why you find the bear commander on this list. But I am curious, hit up the comments and let me know your thought process on how I went about ranking this gun because let me tell you, this was the hardest one to rank in this video. But the best machine gun in the Resident Evil series for me goes to the HNK MP5, Resident Evil 5. Yeah, honestly, for me, the MP5 is my favorite machine gun to use and not only Resident Evil 5, but the entire series as a whole. With that being said, I can easily see why people might prefer the TMP from the original Resident Evil 4 or even the AK-74 from this same game. Yeah, I'll defend the MP5 all day long, so let's go. See, I feel this weapon combines some of the best things about different machine guns in the series. For one, similar to the Lee 5 and Resident Evil 4 remake, the MP5 has the piercing upgrade. This allows the MP5 to shoot through enemies, making it perfect for crowd control. It might not deal as much damage as the AK-74 or even the SIG, but it still packs a decent punch and the perk of being able to hit multiple enemies at once gives it a nice benefit compared to other machine guns in the game. It also has incredible range with good accuracy and it has the highest capacity out of any machine gun in Resident Evil 5 outside of that awful VZ-61. Just to put the MP5 in comparison with other machine guns in the same game, the 6 has 80 bullets and the AK-74 has 50. The MP5 has 150 bullets. Sometimes power is in everything. Speed, reduced loading times, piercing effect to hit multiple enemies at once, including shielded enemies, and even a decent accuracy helps skyrocket this weapon to the top of the list. But the worst machine gun in Resident Evil goes to the CQBR from Resident Evil 4 Remake. How ironic that we start this list with the number five best machine gun as the CQBR in Resident Evil 3 Remake, and then we end this list with the worst machine gun in the series with the CQBR assault rifle in Resident Evil 4 Remake. I mean, that's irony at its best, guys. See, this weapon was in both Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 3 Remakes. Unfortunately though, Resident Evil 4 took it a different route that made it far less effective. Despite this rifle being a fully automatic weapon in the newest entry of Resident Evil, we saw it use rifle ammo. And while that makes perfect sense, seeing an automatic weapon use our valuable sniper ammo is not ideal at all. Now the trade-off for using the rifle ammo versus the machine gun ammo is the firepower of course, so obviously the CQBR is going to do a lot more damage per shot compared to your average machine gun. And while that might sound great, the CQBR requires accurate aim, otherwise you'll find yourself hurting your playthrough more than helping it with this weapon. Every shot counts when it comes to sniper ammo, and when you apply that precious resource to something automatic, and that's easier to miss with and waste shots with, then yeah, you'll find a weapon like this really does hurt you more than it helps you. And the fact that I'm actually saying that this weapon hurts more than it helps should immediately tell you why it is on this list. I'm not saying it's a weapon that you shouldn't use. I'm just saying that your aim needs to be spot on with this weapon. It's an automatic weapon that will burn through some of your most valuable ammunition quickly with the more mistakes that you make. If you're someone that makes a lot of mistakes or even a decent amount of mistakes, then I would recommend staying far away from this weapon. And yeah, I'm obviously someone like that. But that does it for this episode of Nerd Space Games. Hit up the comments and let me know if you agree with my choices for the best and the worst machine guns of Resident Evil. 
Does your favorite or least favorite crack either of the lists? Let me know down below. Anyway, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more ranking videos like this one, especially if you love Resident Evil and Survivor Horror. But as always, guys, I'll catch you on the next episode of Nerdspace Games. Take care.